them. To All right, so we're gonna we're gonna react to this, guys. Uh, we are going to react to this. This is a big, big thing in the uh, ARPG space as well as just Diablo in general. Um, as everybody know who follows me on the on YouTube and the channel and everything, we are all about Diablo. But as of late, the game has really just fallen off a cliff. So this is a huge video. Shout out to the come uh, to the comeback kids. I'll link their stuff down in the description below. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna kind of watch this and kind of react to this. Typically, I don't do a whole lot of reacting content, but um, but yeah. Uh, so let's just check this out. 2023 Diablo 4 officially launched, and it was an instant home run success. Oh. Twitch was booming. The concurrent player base peaked at almost seven million players. Long queue times and celebrities partook in the. Dude, it was just crazy in general. Like everybody was here for it. Like the release and everything was amazing. Right. Everybody thought this was the game they were going to call home. I hate that it like defaults to 480. For a while. Now, there are as little as 400 people watching. Oh Diablo my god, Twitch, dude! Players are forced to complete 436 viewers, bro. Complete world bosses and events completely on their own, and player population dropped by over 99%. Dude. It Chad, that's crazy. It dropped 99%. Nobody's playing. The economy between Eternal and Seasonal Realms have been destroyed by rampant bugs. Season 1 content was an absolute disaster, and Season 2 looks to be the exact same. Yeah. How did this right. happen? Where did this once beloved franchise <laughs> go wrong? And what will it take to fix it? Today, I'm going to explore the timeline of Diablo 4 from pre release to what the game is now. Grab a cup of coffee and Holy settle in crap. because this is the complete timeline of how Diablo 4 became the biggest disappointment in gaming history. Oh my god, dude. The worst patch in update or worst patch in gaming history and now the, the biggest fall in gaming history. Dude, there's no coming back, man. Season 2 ain't gonna fix it. I'm just gonna quote me now, chat. Season 2 is not gonna fix it. The ongoing sexual harassment lawsuit took a major toll on Blizzard, and the company bled high-quality developers and talent rapidly. In Blizzard's earning report for investors, they clearly stated that it has become apparent that some of the Blizzard content planned for the next year will benefit from more development time to reach its full potential. They Dang. also said they need extra time to complete production and continue growing their creative resources to support the titles after launch. Though not stated explicitly, the wording in the report implies that neither Overwatch 2 or Diablo 4 will launch before 2023. Which is what happened. So with no other option, Diablo 4 was officially delayed. They described a mounting sense of dissatisfaction and malice amongst employees yep. as they endured leadership change constantly. And that the Diablo wow. team has been losing talent for over a year as employees look for more competitive wow. wages and better work conditions elsewhere. Activision wow. Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick attributed the company's stock price drop to the game delay of Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2 rather than the ongoing sexual harassment lawsuit filed against the company in Right, that's just a cover up. July of 2021. He quotes... I think what affected that, that right there is the same excuse equivalent of what Rod Ferguson said about like, Hey, we're still learning. That's why the game's bad. We're still learning how to do and develop this, this game. Senior I could have told you that this right here. I didn't know. So like I knew about the, the sexual harassment allegations, but I didn't know about some of this stuff, but like this right here explains why guys, they have an entire brand new out of college, never made a game staff. Remember that video that we did and we talked about it? We watched it and listened to them. This, this right here is why they have a brand new out of college developing team that has never made a game working on Diablo 4. It's probably because they can pay them the least amount of money at what, because entry level, we got you in. And we expecting you to do all that. Make Diablo great. Here you go. Here's 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 like crumbs. Make Diablo great. 
leadership found the performance shares Holy unnecessary crap. and even destructive, arguing that they incentivize leadership to cut corners, compromise, and ship products that are not ready to be released instead of doing what is the best thing for the long-term value creation. Jesus, man. Former employee stated, we're at the point where they're not willing to delay the game anymore. So we all just have to go along and figure out how much we're willing to hurt ourselves to make sure the game gets released in a good enough state. Wow. Wow, bro. How sad is that? How sad is that, bro? Th this right here, this statement, is, is the gaming industry today. Period. End of story. That, that's just what it is. That's just the state of the gaming industry. We are going to release a game. We So we all just have to go along with it and figure out how much we're willing to hurt ourselves to make sure the game gets released in a good enough state. That's the gaming industry in a 100% nutshell. Here, release it. It's it's good enough. And then, and then we'll hopefully... The backlash isn't too bad to where we can try to make it better later. Example, Diablo... Even bigger example right now, uh, No Man's Sky, and recently, Cyberpunk. I mean, hey, the open beta was good, too. Like, besides queue times and, and the bugs, like, the the early access beta was awesome, and the open weekend beta was also amazing. Like, th those releases were pretty solid. Immediately, players are noticing the difference in power between the Druid and the Necromancer, and coming to the conclusion that classes like the Barbarian and the Druid lag behind significantly yep. in terms of kill speed, unlike the other classes leveling. Yeah, those two classes the balance were so was bad. So bad about the Druid that so memes bad. were being made, and the class was nothing but <laughs> laughing. Eight speed. damage. <laughs> Seven. Oh, 17 damage. Oh, what a. <laughs> Players feel as though that the game is missing key features such as the gem tag, Look at his skill face. loadouts, more bank storage, inventory filters, and more quality of life features that are widely seen across gaming. Damage. Between the issues with the early access and open beta weekends, players are starting to believe that the game is poorly developed and there is a lot of fine tuning that needs to be done. Other than that, the base game of combat animations and story seemed good enough in a good enough now. state yep. after the open beta weekends the official diablo team releases the <sighs> into the end game developer oh, yeah, update that's right. video, breaking down everything the game has to offer hi yeah th those were the uh those were the good days of diablo 4 demon yeah that's right it's the end game and developers made incredibly bold promises that were sadly never delivered upon. Never. Brand new activities that provide meaningful progression, no nope. matter their play style. There's going to never be an absence of something to do. Paragon Board is a place where we like to have a lot more depth, a lot more customization, many more options as you go. There's over 120 dungeons to play through and find in Diablo 4, and any one of them can become a nightmare dungeon. Yeah, and they all suck. You only want to play like three or four of them, if that. There's only like, okay, maybe a max of five Nightmare Dungeons that you actually want to play. And they still, they nerfed them all like crazy, dude. I hope he talks about that. Later found out that this was simply not true, being that there was only roughly 20 Nightmare Dungeons in a rotation at a time. Yep. Forcing you to do the same ones over and over again. Yep. A few days later, the Diablo 4 team announces they are making significant changes to character classes, dungeon design, UI changes, and more. This leaves people very excited that the developers are listening to player feedback and are excited for the future. Through the last few months before launch, the Diablo <laughs> 4 Air. developers assure us that they're going back to their roots of Diablo 2. Well, the initial direction was Diablo 2. The fantasy of a dark, gothic, medieval world. Darker and grittier, and Diablo 2 is kind of the inspiration. We wanted to bring Diablo 4 artistically more back towards, like, Diablo 2. Have we heard this story before? Yeah. Is this something that Blizzard is doing once again to tug on our nostalgia? Is history going to repeat itself like it did with Warcraft Reforged, Overwatch, and World of Warcraft Classic? The only thing left to do now is hope what they say is true and await launch day. It was Before all you bad. Know it, the internet is absolutely slammed with Diablo 4 marketing. Whether it be the KFC collaboration, the non-stop Megan Yo, Fox. Low key, that KFC chicken sandwich from Diablo was so good. And she's still fine, by the way.
Xbox promotions, pre-launch dinner parties with big names in the gaming industry, the Diablo 4 Cathedral painting in France, the Halsey Diablo 4 song, and even a launch live-action trailer. They also announced the Diablo 4 Hardcore Leveling Competition. Oh my god, Andrea, too soon. Too soon. This was a complete joke, by the way. Where the first 1,000 users to reach level 100 on Hardcore will be eligible to have their battle tag engraved on a physical statue of Lilith on the Blizzard campus. Blizzard held nothing back in wanting all eyes of the world on Diablo 4, and they knew this launch was going to be a big deal for them. It was either going to make or break the company moving forward, oh, it broke and they the were company. ready to show the world what they had in Diablo 4. I mean, I take that back. They made a crap ton of money off the release of the game, but now they don't give a crap. And at least that's why 99% of the player base is gone. That's what we thought. Yep. On June 1st of 2023, the early access launch of Diablo 4 finally arrived. It doesn't matter too much how amazing a game is or even how well received it Woo! is. Shareholders, executives, and accountants want to know how well a game is selling. They revealed that in just five days, sales of Diablo 4 had surpassed $666 million in revenue, yep. estimating nearly 10 million game copies sold, not even including the additional microtransactions so heavily apparent inside the game. In corporate eyes, Diablo 4 was booming, and it yeah. was nothing short of a monumental success. It became officially Blizzard's fastest selling game of all time. So, Activision Blizzard was back on top, right? Well, that right? statement couldn't <laughs> no. have been more untrue. Yeah, 100%. Shortly dude. after launch, the internet was flooded with reviews about Diablo 4. The early game <clears throat> being relatively good from a gameplay perspective quickly dissipated as people headed into the end game. Oh my god, because dude. Once you got is, past level 50, Diablo bro. Diablo 4 had no innovation and nothing truly creative toward the ARPG genre. Nope. And Blizzard simply took no risks. Tree of Whispers are the same thing as bounties from Diablo 3. It's worse than bounties from Diablo 3. It's way worse than bounties from Diablo 3. It's not even as good. They kept the same generic gambling system. Yep, gambling system's the same. Paragon boards are just stolen content from Path of Exile and Wolken. Nightmare dungeons are just rifts from Diablo 3. Yep. The new free choice leveling is the same thing as Diablo 3's adventure mode. Nothing here was brand new or innovative. It was the same reused and recycled content, and fans were simply bored of it within a few weeks. You know, I never really thought about it all like that, guys. I never really thought about it all like that. It's time. The most That's so true. It's like playing Diablo 3 again. Common mistake we see from games with lack of endgame presence is they make the grind to max level longer, so it gives them time to come up with something new. And what did Blizzard do? Dude, it was so long to get to 100. Exactly just that. One by one, they were going across the board yep. and nerfing dungeon farms to permit anyone from leveling too quickly yep. from specific dungeons. And when that wasn't enough, they completely nerfed elite mob density across the board. Yeah. One of the most dungeon after dungeon after dungeon. We'd find a dungeon that had a lot of elites. It was literally the next day it's nerfed. Most fun aspects of the game. Instead of buffing the lackluster dungeons that were boring and slow, they nerfed the fun ones. They yep. continued to do this with nearly everything in the game moving forward. Build diversity was the same oh. result. Across all classes, you could see a clear-cut pattern in people using the same exact builds over and over, over again. Over and over again, that's Instead so of true. buffing weak abilities to bring them in line with the strong ones, they simply nerfed the abilities that were performing too well, making everything feel boring. That's what we said every single time they did it. They're like, we're nerfing the good stuff instead of buffing the bad stuff. And with the price of recost and the non-existence of skill loadouts or a dual specialization system in play, it was too risky to constantly be testing out and theory crafting new builds. That's so true, man. It was too man. tedious to respec hundreds of paragon points manually one by one and flat out too expensive. Yep. Having to grind out countless legendary aspects, uniques, and perfect affix rolls. Doesn't that look like my inventory chat? My inventory is so full of stuff. On every piece of gear was something that took too much time. By this time, players were reaching level 65 plus, and the level pacing drastically slowed down, and so did the excitement of good loot rewards as well. So the problem with Diablo 4 is that- I remember watching the Asmin do this. This was such a good example of, like, doing things wrong in the end game. After you spend about 80 hours into the game, all of the gear upgrades that you can get are so minimal, there's nothing else to do. So that is true. Remember, we talked about that, like- Soon as you got to world tier three, world tier four, and you were 60 or 65, 
you could get all your end game gear because of the item tiers. Remember, you could find item tier that was 725 ancestral gear piece at 65. You're done. You're never going to find anything like so much better between 65 to 100. There was like no reason. That's why like as soon as you found a certain item, you just kept that for 45 levels, 50 levels, you know? Time it took to level vastly increased, and the rewards and purpose for leveling became so much smaller. It's very obvious to everybody now that Diablo 4 has no endgame, and it was heavily front-loaded. The minor endgame testing, mixed with the constant changing of development teams, and major lack of inexperience in workplace professionalism, was finally starting to take its toll. During Meanwhile, this whole time, you got this guy like, Yo, man, insert corny joke. Insert corny joke. <laughs> Asmund's always right. Shout out to Asmund. This time, the in-game cash shop is being flooded with skins and cosmetic options available for purchase. Even some cases where the cosmetic armor bought with real money would be bugged and not even appear on your character. The hardcore player base drama is at an all-time high, with players dying constantly to server instability, yeah, disconnects, dude. and things being completely out of their control through bugs and poor optimization of the game. Even worse, to confirm your place as a winner in the race, you had to tweet the Diablo Twitter account a Diablo 4 hashtag. Andrea, a person in our community, did this and didn't and get lastly, credit. And lastly, a picture proving she did not get credit for reaching 100. It. She did the it in like three or four days. The amateur middle school system of confirming a challenge so important that hundreds of thousands of people are participating in ends up being a massive mistake and they make errors announcing the wrong winners. Yep. This showed a major lack of effort and care in a multi-billion dollar company. And once again, amateur or brand new developers making huge mistakes. Skating by and doing things just good enough. Just good once enough. Again. There were even several websites out there that tracked the progress of the hardcore characters with having zero budget. So surely Blizzard could have done it themselves. It became too difficult to manage storage inside of a full oh new my ARPG God, dude, game. Do not get Between me started gems, on that. that looks like my storage. Trays <laughs> and aspects, rare items, uniques. Inventory was quickly flooded within minutes of grinding out a single dungeon, and players demanded more room for their other characters. When Blizzard finally responded over a month later, they stated they couldn't add more because it creates a lot of memory overhead. When you see another This is such a joke, man player in game you load them and their entire stash filled with all of their items things like a gem tab leaderboard stash tabs loot filters ability loadouts all announced to be added in future expansions sometimes as far as six K months w. to a year from now one month after God, the game man. launches they hosted a developer live stream bringing us all some it was crucial so bad. updates to try and calm so, the so community bad. down to kick off the show they gave us a 30 minute segment on their new diablo immortal class that's right the blood knight and the whole lore behind the mobile game right now they also finally showed off the battle pass monetization and the seasonal blessings that are implemented to help us quickly gain crafting material no this was a complete joke materials gold and experience points more efficiently this is in regard to having us create whole new characters inside of seasonal realms and believe it or not those completely backfired as well yes when you spent smoldering ash to increase the amount of gold or materials that you would gain there was a bug that would increase the amount of costs of everything as well by the same exact percentages so it became nothing but an illusion of choice yep and to even acquire all of your smoldering ash you actually had to obtain max level to acquire them all leaving you a system yeah i need to reach a max level for a catch-up mechanic system that is nothing but broken and contradictory only half of your renown carried over and half of the brand new content and class changes in season one was locked to the seasonal realms and was forbidden on the eternal realms yep, very meaning true. meaning that if you wanted all of these brand new changes and updates you had to start all over and create a whole new character you were then forced to go on to seasonal realms and players were quickly flooded with additional monetization. They even coincidentally made so the paid bad, accelerated man. battle pass button the largest icon and glow red on the homepage. They also coincidentally didn't add a confirmation button so that if you accidentally clicked it, you spent your money without any warning. Bugs even went rampant through season one that with was people crazy, having the man. ability to trade hundreds of millions of gold, legendaries, and even unique items between the eternal and seasonal realms, completely destroying hard-earned player progression. By this point, players were at their limit. <laughs> Metacritic scores plummeted, and yep. the population slowly dwindled down to nothing within a week of season one being launched. And with the final nail in the coffin, 
Larian Studios released Baldur's Gate 3 on August 3rd, which of absolutely crushed Diablo. Easily 4. being the front runner for the game of the year, it knocked Diablo 4 out. The game had longer replayability, no egregious monetization, good yep. developers, better RPG aspects, innovative design with stable servers and a real character creator, and gameplay sections with freedom of choice throughout your entire playthrough. Most of these things Blizzard used to take pride in, yeah, but they those don't days anymore, man. are now over. A game that just a few months ago had a population of almost 7 million concurrent active players Jesus. at once has now lost more than 99% of its total oh population my God. and is shrinking more and more by the day. So what was the exact cause of Diablo 4's failure? Was it the constant change in development teams before launch day? The loss of key figures within the company due to the allegations and walkouts? Developers disliking the game they're creating and the increased malice between leaders and company team members? Was it the constant delays, the microtransactions being forced onto players? Or is it just the simple fact that Blizzard has completely lost its touch and the era of this once King of Kings is now over? I would probably no say the last really one. No one really knows exactly. But one thing is for sure. No game in history has had almost 7 million concurrent active players at one time, and within a couple months, get reduced down to less than 40,000 active players throughout the entire day. Wow! 99.4% loss in player base count. Jesus! This is why Diablo 4 is the biggest disappointment in recent gaming history. Wow. Hopefully heading into 2024, they can bring loads of improvements into the game and yeah. maybe flip the script on the But again, by situation. that point, it's already too late. Maybe, just maybe, it's we can have too a late. solid ARPG to play. But just remember, the new Path of Exile is on its way. That's going to be and sick. And it can very well be too late. Yeah, it's already... Have you played Diablo 4? What are your thoughts and feelings? What do you think is the biggest mistake they made? Let me know in the comment Woo! section below. Well, guys, uh, that is pretty dang bad. That is pretty dang bad. Can they do the death of EA and Ubisoft next? Yes, please. Especially, um, especially, especially EA. EA is just like Blizzard in that sense. They don't care about anything. They just want money. Wow, guys, what do you guys think about all that? That's crazy that the player base is officially gone. The game was officially dead. And again, with the release of Path of Exile coming next year, I don't think that Diablo 4 has any chance of bouncing back. I don't think it matters what they put in any seasonal update for both the season plus the Eternal Realm. Or if they do any expansion that we would have to pay for, for like an additional class to try to spark you know, people to come back. It's just not going to happen. Everything they should do from here on out needs to be free. All the updates need to be free. All the expansions need to be free. Like, I, like the impression is there. Like, nobody is going to play. Nobody's going to play. And that's the same thing why I talk about No Man's Sky and more recently Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk had such a huge, huge, huge popularity. Everybody was hyped. The game releases, it's trash. Everybody falls off the cliff within three weeks because of how bad the state of the game is. And now two years later, we have an update for Cyberpunk to make Cyberpunk really good now. Same thing with No Man's Sky. It took them years to get all the updates for this game to be actually good. And Diablo 4 is in the same exact spot. That's why nobody's playing these games. Nobody. 40 or 50,000 concurrent players on any given day is nothing. If you think that makes your game successful or like, hey, look at this new update. Now look, we went from 20,000 to 50,000. That's so great. Your game is dead with those numbers. Nobody's playing. It just really, really sucks, man. It just really sucks. That's the state of the gaming industry and with some of these companies. I really do hope that a lot of these companies get their stuff put back together. But overall, wow, what a good video. And it was absolutely crazy, man. Um, hope it gets better, man. RIP Diablo, Diablo 4. We're on Path of Exile. We're getting ready um, to gear up for Path of Exile 2 next year. RIP, man. I hope it's good, but RIP. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share everything. Get the buzz talking. And as always, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.